The Sony a7 Mark IV is one of the best full frame cameras on the market to date. And in this video, we're gonna be diving into how to set up this camera and optimize it for video. We're not gonna be diving into any of the photo based settings. So make sure that the specific dial on your camera is set to video. And if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. And before we dive into the menu, unlike other Sony full frame cameras of old, you used to just have to use the buttons to navigate. However, you can navigate using the touch screen on the camera. So if that's easier for you, go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna be navigating uh, through the buttons just because it's honestly a little bit easier and it's a bit more accurate. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So to start this first menu up at the top here is for your my menu settings, but we're not gonna get to that first. We're gonna do that last, but this one, we're gonna go straight down on the left-hand side and try to go through most of these options that are video-based functions. For the first section for the image quality, you do wanna go over to set your file format, the movie settings to anything that you would traditionally use for video. So if you're used to shooting 4K or if you're used to shooting 1080p, then you can select accordingly to what you want. For most of the time, we're just gonna use the normal 4K. The movie settings is gonna deal with the frame rate. So if you go over to the recording frame rate, you can choose between 24, 30, or 60p. For the record setting, you can choose 100 megabits per second in 422 10-bit or 4208 bit or 60 megabits per second at 4208 bit. For most of the time here, we're shooting 422 10-bit. If you want something with a little less resolution, something you would traditionally see in uh, older Sony cameras, go ahead and choose the 4208 bit. Now for the S and Q settings, this is gonna dictate what you choose when it goes into the slow and the quick mode. So this will be dependent upon your individual shots or what you're trying to do. Currently, this is set in 24 frames per second for the normal recording rate. That's just because that's what I use. One frames per second, depending on, again, what you prefer. And then the actual bit rate for the record setting, you have a few options here where you can choose 422 10-bit, 4208 bit or 4208 bit at 60 megabits per second. Which one you choose is honestly a preference. For the highest quality though, go ahead and select is 422 10-bit. Proxy settings in the camera, again, is gonna be personal preference. I do like to use proxy settings at different times just because the 422 10-bit can be a bit large. So you can choose if you want a higher quality HD or if you want a lower quality HD. Um, I choose the lowest quality just because again, proxy files, the point of them is to be small, but this is a personal preference on what you select. And this is going to be 1280p by 720p files. So essentially 720p HD files for those proxies, which are gonna be way smaller. And those will be 4208 bit, six megabits per second. Now the APS-C Super 35 shooting setting is gonna be dependent on if you want this to automatically switch as you put different lenses on, or if you want it to go ahead and stay in either a crop sensor size setting, or if you want it to move into full frame, I prefer to leave this set to auto. For lens compensation at this time, this is currently just set to auto. We're not making any adjustments here. Again, you can choose to adjust this if you prefer, but for now, this is gonna be set to auto. Moving back over into the regular menu, going over to page two. When you go over into the media section, if you go into the record media settings, you'll see that you can decide what you want to happen when it comes to slot number one or slot number two for the SD card. If you select the first slot, these are some of the options that you can choose for simultaneously recording or to go from slot one and then to slot two, depending on the recording for right now, I just prefer to keep it separated instead of copying individual footage from one card to the other, but feel free to choose what you want. For the second slot, you do have a bit limited options comparative to the first one, but again, this is a personal preference depending on how you prefer to shoot. Right now, I just leave mine set to as is. Moving down to the third page on the file settings, when you select it, it'll move you over. You'll see that the file number is set to series. This is traditionally what you'll see across any Sony cameras. You can change the file name format so that it's not just based on the title. You can adjust that to date and title, again, depending on how you prefer to shoot. Now for the title name settings, because I use multiple Sony cameras, I do prefer to name mine A7 IV so that I know which files came from the Sony A7 Mark IV versus other Sony cameras, but you can put your name or you can put Mark I or Mark II, depending on which one you have, or if you actually like to name your cameras, that way you know which one you were shooting it on or your A cam or your B cam. Moving down to the shooting mode, we're gonna go ahead and skip this one, particularly for the memory recall settings. Again, I would refer you to the video that I did on how to set up the memory recall for individual Sony cameras. However, it depends on how you like to set your camera up and saving those individual profiles. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and skip this. 
for the USB streaming coming out of the camera, you do have two options here. The first one is going to be the resolution or the frame rate. Um, for most of this video, you'll see this set to 1080p options, whereas when it's not connected up to the computer, it would be 4K. So I would encourage you to change this accordingly, but 4K export it through the USB is going to be 15 frames per second. So you have to make the decision of if you want 1080p 30 or 60, which I find a little bit odd, but I'm using 1080p 30 at this moment. USB streaming movie recording. At this time, I have this set to enabled so that if I want to record at the same time I'm streaming, that is possible. Moving into the silent shutter mode, this is going to be dependent on if you are doing photography or anything like that, or if you want the ability to have the camera actually still operate different functions like you know, pretending as if it's taking photos uh, while the lens is off if you're showcasing that. But for this time, we're going to go ahead and skip this since we're just focusing on video based settings. Moving on to page seven, we have the audio recording options for the first audio recording. Of course, that's set to on since we're doing videos is the levels is going to be dependent on what you use for a microphone or what you choose to use for any video functions. The audio out timing is currently set to live is what you'll find standard in the camera. You will find though that the wind and noise reduction is sometimes enabled. I go ahead and turn this off because if there's any processing to the audio, I would prefer to do that in editing. So it's not overdone and the audio files aren't completely ruined. So this is a preference, but I would encourage turning this off. And of course the audio level display is so that you can see it on the screen. I encourage to turn this on as well. So you can see what those settings are as you're actively recording. Moving right along to page eight for the time code, we're going to go ahead and skip this. But if you are going into any specific film options, you will want to play around in this area. However, for now we're skipping this, we're just doing basic settings here. Moving on to page number nine for the steady shot. This you can actually actually change through your function menu. However, I usually set mine set to standard. And then if you connect a third party lens that doesn't have stabilization, this is automatically going to be set to off. So the only other option would be if you're setting it to active. When you're using manual lenses, you'll want to come down here to the steady shot adjust and you can leave it set to auto or you can adjust it for manual and then choose the focal length that you prefer to use. But for now, we're going to go ahead and leave this set to auto. Number 10, we have the zoom settings, which I really enjoy because when I'm going into use clear image zoom, this is usually by default set to something else. But instead of just the optical zoom only or a digital zoom, I prefer to use clear image zoom, which zooms in on the sensor. It's a really wonderful feature. The custom Z speed or the zoom speed or remote zoom speed, it depends on what you're actually using. I just keep these set to a standard three. And then if I notice that I need more uh, speed and I need to increase this number, then you can go ahead and go this all the way up to eight if you want it to go really fast. But for me, three is pretty normal. Or if you want it to zoom out or zoom in, you can do five. But three maintains a really nice auto focusing speed as well as it just feeling a bit more natural. Moving on to number 11 for the shooting display. I do have the grid line display set to off just because I noticed that these are very white dominant lines and it's very, honestly, it's kind of distracting. So I have this currently set to off. It's not like some of the older Sony cameras, but for me, mine is set to the rule of thirds, but these are some of the options that you use, but I get the most value out of the, just using the rule of thirds and the recording emphasis display is set to on. Currently, there's not anything that I personally use within the marker display. However, I would encourage you to go through this if you do feel that you need something within there, but let's go ahead and move on to the exposure settings. When you're on the first icon for the exposure, you will have the ability to auto slow the shutter. I have left, left this set to on currently. The ISO for the lowest range is set to 320 or you can lower this all the way down to 125 actively in the camera. This is not what it would be permanently set at, but the ISO range will dictate how low or how high the camera can go. So if you notice that your camera is overexposing quite a bit, then you can adjust that so that it's sitting at a specific range, or you can adjust the maximum so that that's a little bit lower. So it's not going all the way It's 204,000, but it stays at, let's say 50,000 or 60,000 or the like. Currently mine is set to the max just because I manually set the exposure. Now, currently in the exposure compensation, as well as in the metering section, there's not anything personally that I use, but when you go over here to face priority in multimetering, but this is so that as you're going through and readjusting the frame, it refocuses for the exposure on your face first versus just the dominant other lighting sources in the image. So I do like that. And that's set to on. Over here in the white balance area, we have the custom white balance that's set. You can adjust this to any of the options within the Sony camera. However, 
uh, for me, that's usually set down here to the custom range that we use set with the gray card. Similar to any of the other Sony cameras, you have the standard ambience and the white for the white balance. I prefer ambience. And again, that's a personal preference with the shockless white balance. That's going to adjust how fast or how slow that this camera adjusts. And I do notice that the Sony cameras are moving pretty quickly these days when it comes to that. So I like to set this to two. That's about a medium range, or you can set it to three so that when you're actively recording, it adjusts the exposure slower than it usually would. But medium here at a number two is set pretty good. If you want it to move slower, then you can set that down to three. For the color tone, we have the dynamic range optimizer currently set to off. Based on this, your picture profiles, again, is going to be dependent on what you personally enjoy using. For me, I have this set to PP1, which is just a custom profile that we use and set up or you can have this set to PP0, which would be on standard. The soft skin effect is set to off. And if you do want to enable this, I find that the low setting works the best versus the high and the medium tends to look a little weird. Over here on the last page for the zebra display, this is really gonna help when it comes to exposure levels. However, currently right now, uh, with the recent work that I was doing is just set to off. However, you can enable this and set the zebras for the exposure. And again, I would encourage you to, depending on the environment or the setup that you use, you can adjust this to increase it or decrease it for now. Mine is just currently set to off. Moving on to the autofocus and manual focus settings. Again, most of this is pretty much standard as is, but when you come in here to manual focus or autofocus, the transition speed is currently set to five. I do prefer for it to move fairly quickly as well as the autofocus assist. Mine is currently set to off, but you're welcome to enable this if you do wanna use this. For me, if I'm going to go manual, I would prefer to just do it myself. Um, but if it's automatic, which is what this is for, then at that point, I just leave it off because the Sony cameras are really good. I don't feel like it's necessary here. Your regular focus mode is going to be dependent on what you're doing. But for me, I prefer continuous autofocus since that's predominantly what I use. But if you like to use manual focus or you're using manual focus lenses, this is going to be an option that you may want to change for now. Mine is set to continuous AF. For the focus area, when we move this over here, this is currently set to zone based on the last settings that I were using. However, when we come over here to wide, this is what I personally prefer. Or if you're in a situation where you do need to only use the center, you can use something like center and it will adjust depending on what's in that frame area. However, for now, I'll keep mine set to wide. When you come over here to the focus area limit, if you go over here, you can select or deselect what you choose to use most commonly or most most of the time that you're not using. For me, I can deselect the uh, small as well as the medium because I tend to only use the large one or you can leave it to expandable spot and then you can select OK for whatever works best for you. For me, this is what I predominantly use. So I'll leave this set as such. Moving on down to the face and eye autofocus. When you're moving over here, this is currently set to human and with the eye and face priority autofocus set to on, as well as the subject selection setting. Um, I leave this set to these three options, which is basically standard what you get out of the box. Um, I can deselect it if I know I'm never gonna select bird uh, or what have you, but for now, I'll just leave it selected. All of these other settings are set as is straight out of the camera, but you can register face priority, which I do have mine set to on. For the focus assistant and you get into the focus mapping, currently mine is set to off. However, if you select this and enable this setting to on, when you go over here, it can tell you what's in focus or what is not as you adjust the focusing ring on your specific camera. For me, I'll just leave this set as is because I'm not doing any manual focus. So we'll go ahead and disable that and set it back to off. The focus magnifier, again, I find it best to go ahead and leave this set at one times magnification because anything more than that tends to be a bit more distracting. With the focus magnification, you can increase that so it goes from one to four. So that way when you're in the focus magnifier, it goes way closer than what it usually would. But for me, I prefer to go ahead and leave it set to one. I find that four is a bit too punched in, but in certain scenarios, you may find it handy. For the peaking display, the last one here, this is currently set to off. However, I did adjust mine so that it is currently set to high and adjust the peaking color set to blue because when it is enabled, that way it's much, much easier to see what is going on on the camera when I do have it set to autofocus or manual focus. So that way I can easily see what I need to. But for now, I'll go ahead and set this to off. The playback option is honestly very easy here. I don't make any changes here. I leave it set to standard, except for when I'm going into viewing, I don't want it to show me the image as soon as I've taken it. Other than that, let's move right on to the network settings. 
Over here in the network settings, this is where you'll find the ability to connect to your smartphones, connect to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the like. For now, there's nothing here that I honestly would change except that I've already registered and connected with my smartphone, which is very easy and straightforward. Now over here in the toolbox, or as I like to call it, the suitcase, <laughs> you can have the area or the date set to your specific area. However, when you first purchase the camera, this will automatically be set. However, if you notice that you're in 25 frames per second versus 24 frames per second, that depends on your region. And that will be the NTSC or the PAL selector, which depending on where you purchase your camera is usually automatically set. But if you need to change that, you can do so here. Now, one amazing feature with some of the newer full frame cameras is the ability to save and export and load your settings so you can save it to an SD card. So if you have multiple uh, full frame newer Sony cameras, then you can convert this across the various different ones. However, we don't have anything to do here. So we're moving right around, along to the operation customize option. Now, this is when we start to get into the customized key dial setup and based on some photos that I was taking with the a7 IV, the photos are different than the videos. But since we're going into the video section, we're going to go ahead and skip this very first dial here for the custom key sets that I have for the video settings for the rear. I have the automatic exposure toggle that remains as is. I didn't change that for the second option here. I have this set to zoom so I can clearly and quickly access the clear image zoom for the third button here. I have this set to the APS-C or the full frame button so that I can quickly punch in as needing to. And then the marker display is so that I can turn on my rule of thirds or not as I'm going through and operating the camera for the finder or the monitor selection. I have this so that the sensor on the eyepiece is not currently adjusting as I'm waving my hand about but I can press this button, which would be the trash can so that it jumps to the eyepiece or not. And I can turn the back screen off if I need to over on the rear two settings. I have this set to whatever it is currently in the photo base seven settings. However, I did go ahead and adjust so that when I hit the left directional button, it goes from autofocus to manual focus. However, number five is set to the automatic white balance toggle so that I can decide if I'm using automatic white balance that I can lock it if it's set to something good when I'm traveling and on the go. My top two buttons here are set to movie settings and the audio record levels, just because I know the audio levels is something that I will commonly use all the time, as well as the custom button here for video. I don't have this set to anything for photos though. I do have this set again so that I can toggle between moving over to APS-C or back to full frame, which is really, really nice. For my basic dial functions here, everything is set to whatever it standardly is set in the camera for photo base settings. And then for this third option here, I do have this set to ISO just because if my thumb is up there, sometimes it's easier than hitting that right directional button, which is just a whole other action with your thumb. And this is just easier. So I set that to ISO for the custom key setting on playback options. I'd made no changes here, so it's still set to factory settings, but I did make some adjustments for the function menu settings. At the top, you'll notice all of the settings that I use specifically when it comes to photo. For the most part, I made some small adjustments to various things that I quickly would access or want access to. Focus mapping, you'll see this here twice just because I didn't have another button to set it to. And I will adjust this as I find more need as I'm using the camera. But for now, you'll see two of these focus map mapping options here. But I do have S and quick settings here, the ability to change uh, the various autofocus settings. And then I do have picture profiles. So if I do want to turn this to off or change this to S log two or S log three or HLG, I could do that. The recording frame rate, as well as the record settings. Those are some of the things that I access most commonly when it comes to video that I want to use. Most of the photo based functions I haven't changed from what they are standardly set to. I tend to change things as I notice that I'm using them a lot more and then I'll move that over or per event or function. And even though there is a dedicated record button at the top of the camera, just because my finger naturally rests on the shutter button, I have the record with the shutter button set to the on. Moving down to the dial customize button. When it comes to photos, I did make quite a few changes here. However, because we're not going through this for photos, we'll go ahead and skip this. And when we come down to video again, most of those settings are exactly as we saw before that we went through already. And so we'll skip this for menus five, six, and seven. There were no additional changes that I made. These, those are solely set as they are as well as eight. And it's not until you get into nine that I actually did go through and make some changes in the camera. So let's go through those. The auto monitor off is currently set to off. The power save start time is set to off. 
Power save by monitor is set to both link and then the auto power off with the higher temperatures is set to high. And I highly do encourage that you change this on your camera versus leaving it set as is. When it comes to the sound option, there is one major area that I do change that I find highly annoying that is on when this camera is with any of the Sony cameras, honestly. And that is the audio signal so that when you start and stop recording or what have you, it makes all of these different chimes that is currently set to off. The volume settings is going to be dependent on what you prefer. But for me, everything else is pretty much standard down here to page number 11. We are moving on to the USB settings. Most of everything is set to standard. However, the USB power supply is set to on so that you can charge the battery in the camera. For page 12 for the external output for your HDMI settings. I do currently have mine set to a higher resolution. However, when you come down here to the output settings, this is currently set to 1080p based on the capture card I'm using for this particular video. However, I usually would set that a bit higher as well. If you're going to be doing time code, or if you have a device that you're wanting to connect, then you do want to turn this to on for now. This is currently disabled. And even though this option here is grayed out, when you have a 4k capture card connected, then at that point you will be able to select this option and you can make some changes in your camera. But for now, this is currently grayed out with the current capture card using in this video. And for the purposes of this video, the HDMI info is set to the display being on so that you can see the menu. However, you do want this off so that you're not seeing all of the autofocus icons and the like when you're live streaming. So turn this option to off. And for the last page here for the setup option, everything is set to standard. However, if you do want to adjust some of the pixel mapping and the like, you can make adjustments there. But for now, let's go over to the my menu. For the my menu settings, I do currently only have two pages. Again, I encourage you to add options as you're currently using more and more features of the camera. However, because I have some things set to the custom button, I don't need as many in the my menu compared to other Sony cameras. For the my menu page, I do have the file format menu settings, the movie settings and S and Q as well as proxy settings, all of those. So I can quickly make adjustments, the format so I can quickly format SD cards as well as the two memory recall settings. If I need to save a profile or move that over to various different SD cards. In my second my menu, I do have on here the silent mode. So if I do need to make adjustments for that, the shoe audio settings so that if I'm putting on the Sony microphone, that doesn't require any cables that I can make adjustments for that. The white balance, zebra levels and display and the HDMI info display as I'm making adjustments for doing tutorials and the like. And if you need those menu options on or not. And if you need to add options, delete them or rearrange them, you can do so by going to the my menu settings tab here and then you can move those around as you prefer. The Sony a7 IV is chocked full of settings that we didn't really dive into in this particular video. This is some of just the basic things that I use when it comes to video and that will help you get going. However, I do encourage you to make changes, go back through some of the menus and honestly get familiar with the newer Sony menu settings so that you know what to go through and what to find and really take advantage of setting customized dials and cut buttons as you notice that you need certain features more than others. But if you're coming from APS-C Sony sensor size cameras, I highly encourage you to check out some of the videos on the screen right now because I made a few comparisons to the Sony a66 and the lower bare bones vlog entry camera, the Sony ZV-E10, which I think you might find interesting.